Good day flight simmers. Today I'm going to try a flight with the X-Cub uh, which has the Garmin G1000 avionics in it. We're going to try flying from Sanford to Daytona Beach in Florida and we are going to use a little nav map to do a flight plan and see if we can get it to import and run properly in this uh, Hondel aircraft to fly. So here we are zooming in on Florida and uh, let's just get a look at there's Daytona Beach right there there's Sanford and uh, up here is Daytona Beach so let's bring up a little nav map free uh, software program that you can download very easy to use and you can turn a lot of things off uh, like the airports BOR compass you know you can set this up the way you like I love the way it shows the uh, streets lake names and airport names etc very easy to use so if you do decide to download it uh, make sure you connect to Microsoft Flight Sim if that's what you're using and also you're going to want to go to options and your cache files the little nav map is recommending that you download this zip file and put it in a folder and go find it and then use that get this message directory and files are valid they don't recommend using online elevation data at this time because of errors possible in elevation profile so let's take a look at uh, creating a flight plan so I'm just going to zoom in here on Sanford Orlando Sanford International and I'm just going to hit this little show airport weather icon so I can see that the wind is blowing this way and um, got one barb on it so probably let's have a look here if I hold my mouse right over that little airport uh, icon there and I go down to NOAA I can see that uh, the wind is blowing in at 280 at 10 knots so, you know, you're going to want to probably pick runway 7 right, fly into the wind for takeoff. So the winds always uh, follow this little shaft here into that circle. That's the direction it's blowing. The barbs indicates the strength of the wind. The more, the stronger the winds. So I'm going to turn that off. What I'm going to do is uh, go in here and pick a um, gate. So I'm going to pick gate 33. I'm just going to right click on that and say set as departure. And then I'm going to go up here and pick a runway. And I'm going to pick 27 right. I'm not sure if they're going to give that to me. I'll have to wait until ATC comes on when I start the flight. So right now we have a departure in that direction. And uh, we're going to fly out and turn back this way. So you can um, you can ask for departure procedures. Um, so for runway 27, um, right. If I click on this, it's uh, giving me this line right here to fly out. So, I mean, it's not uh, in a show and manual. So I'm not going to use that because it's pretty much the same as my straight out departure. All right, so now I'm going to go up to Daytona. Wind's likely blowing in the same direction. And I am going to set uh, this at, just right click on it and select uh, this airport as my destination and then uh, I'm just going to click on the uh, weather again so it's blowing right this way so I'm going to want to probably land on runway 25 right so I'm going to click here and say 25 right now you can um, just right click on uh, the airport icon that blue circle with the white line 
and you can also select your runway this that way as well so there's more than one way to do stuff in this little nav so now um, I'm just going to leave it at that there are uh, approaches you can right click on and you can say show arrival procedure so on a longer flight um, I'm going to use ILS so I'm just going to write down uh, that this runway 25 right I make a note that the uh, frequency is 10970 you can see that right there so it's, that's another nice thing about little nav map you're getting your frequencies and you're getting which runways are our ILS or RNAV etc you also have your little waypoints here that you can add to your flight plan so I'm just going to check and see star is like a arrival procedures and if I click on that you know I'm not sure what happens uh, sometimes you'll, you'll see a blue line coming out and maybe I'm just a little too close to see it but I'm not getting anything and then for approach on 27 right that's 25 you can see that's 25 that's 25 so let's just go in here and uh, okay it is 25 right so our 827 is what we're taking off on so there's uh, some approach options here for you this one's no good obviously it's not coming from the right direction and I want an ILS see that's a localizer and RNAV now there's there's an ILS approach right there so it takes me way out here so you would fly out to there and then come around and in so and this is like a missed approach so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this approach for that runway and use this waypoint we'll see what happens with when we uh, I'm going to have to insert that Okay, so you can see it's done that. So that's still a pretty sharp turn. But I'm going to let um, Microsoft Flight Sim like, uh, see what it's going to do when I just go ahead and use that. Now the other thing you can do is you can click on here and say, uh, I want to be at 4,000 or 3,000. Depends. But I'm just going to adjust. This is uh, going to be low altitude and I'm going to hit calculate I'm using this airways here all airways I'm not using radio nads because it's not an R nav so I'll just hit calculate okay so now it just made made some calculations here so added a waypoint or two I'm just going to turn off that weather um, indicator so there's our flight plan and here here it is here so this window automatically opened up just like this one did so I'm going to close that I'm going to save that just by clicking on that and I'm going to hit save if you have another one already you, you can rename it if you want to keep the old one or you can just replace it now if I go to uh, file and hit export this flight plan as a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 flight plan, so so Microsoft Flight can recognize it. I just click on there, and it'll name it, take me there, and once again, if you already have it, just replace it. All right. So um, the other thing you can do is you can bring up this. Uh, little window here it says open the flight plan elevation profile so you can see here we're going to climb up there's our top of climb and there's our top of descent now what I like also is you can if I right click here you can select some options so, so I'm showing ILS or GLS RNP so I can see there that there's the frequency and that's the glide uh, slope is three degrees so 
and and this will tell you when your boat you're going to get there and probably pick it up so you can see this while you're flying and you can see the 3,000 feet I'm not going to run into any issues it got to be above 1500 feet so 3,000 is okay so I'm just going to downsize that just going to go to um, the world map here and I'm going to hit more which will bring up now the opportunity to load or save a file so I'm going to say load and I'm going to grab this file I'm going to say open so there is the file we just created and it looks very similar to the one we had maybe slightly different I thought there was a little bit more in there but uh, this is what Microsoft Flights in made of it so all we have to do there's your waypoints and your nav log you can look at that it's very similar to what it's on the nav map so there we go um, once again this has given us uh, our elevations and distances all right I'm going to click here and I'm going to click fly now since we picked a parking spot or ramp or gate then um, we're going to do a cold start and I'm just going to use um, the checklist that's given to us uh, to assist to speed things up so in just a second it should come up so here we are at the airport and we're ready to fly I'm just going to take a look outside and just go around and look at the aircraft. Everything looks good. And um, probably I'm going to go over here. So I won't need a pushback or anything and there's nothing in my way. So I'll uh, just have a good look at how beautifully this aircraft is rendered in Microsoft Flight Sim. Very realistic. Let's take a look at... Uh, how things move here when I okay you can see the little cables and everything moving and uh, the elevators and then you can get your ailerons so everything looks good and everything seems to be working good with my Logitech Extreme 3D Pro joystick I'm going to be using a keyboard and a mouse as well to fly this plane now when you have a little nav map up uh, you can bring it up I'm just leaving this up for a second so we can look at the uh, flight plan and then I'll close that little box but um, if I want to go back to the aircraft I, I could do things with my joystick and the map won't go off but if I want to um, use my keyboard or my mouse I have to click on the Microsoft Flight Sim area and then I have to uh, uh, do whatever I want but you'll notice that the uh, map disappeared so that's one of the problems uh, maybe you'll consider it a problem but I don't mind it too much I would like if it's just stayed up whenever you wanted to if you're using the keyboard but actually when you have the map up the nav map it's sort of using your your keyboard and your mouse t t for you to do things so that's why you can't be having them work for both uh, windows at the same time. So I'm just going to uh, use the checklist here and just go autocomplete. So we've done the pre flight inspection, all these things have been taken care of. So now before starting engine, parking brake set and fuel selector so parking brake the parking brakes right set. down here and you can fuel set selector. that with your um, fullest tank yeah there we go so that's done uh, you can also uh, do your parking brake with control delete on your keyboard I'll d I'm just going to show you how that's going to work here if I do control delete I think you can see it setting on and off. Okay, so uh, right now uh, we'll continue on.
to starting the engine. Battery switch. Okay. On. Electric fuel pump. XCB six one six. Clearance delivery XCB six one six IFR to Daytona ready to climb. Take two seven right climb and maintain three thousand feet. Departure frequency is one three five decimal three squawk four four one three. XCUB 616 cleared to Daytona okay, Airport. Okay, so I'm just going to auto complete Take the off rest runway, of the stuff. Seven right climb and maintain 3,000 feet. Departure on one tree, five decimal tree, squawk four four one tree. On until flow XCUB, peaks, then OFF. Six three back, correct. Contact ground on one two one decimal tree five. Good day. I'm going to check the barometric pressure too. I can just press B Ground on my XCUB keyboard. So it just changes all that. IFR. So now we're at the correct altitude. XCB 616 taxi to and hold short of runway 27 right by a taxiway hotel. Cross runway two Okay, so we got 27 right. We got the runway we asked for. Taxiing hold short runway 27 right by a taxiway hotel cross runway 27 center cross runway tree 6 delta XCUB 616. Okay, so that, that page is complete. Now after starting the engine, lights as required. So lights. We can put on uh, as required. Avionics master switch. Uh, landing lights. Light pulse. Avionic master switch on. will turn on. Okay. So, to taxi, we got to release the parking brake. And we're ready to go. So I'm going to auto-complete the page. So just make sure that you're, you're ready to go here. Now, I will say one thing about this plane. You don't want to get going too fast because and, and brake hard because it, it's uh, it's a tail dragger, so that means it's going to nose dive into the pavement and smash the propeller if you put the brakes on too quick. So I just did the rudder test there, working fine. Now this thing's a little tippy too. But other than that, with the Garmin G1000 inside, it's a pretty good little plane. So I'm just going to apply the brake slowly. Okay, we're just going to go inside and take a look at things for a sec. Alright, so let's just see what kind of a flight plan we got here. Okay, so this is on VOR, for starters. So we don't really want it on VOR. If I click on that with the Garmin G1000 avionics, it's a touch screen, and then I just uh, change this to GPS. And then I'm going to click again, and I'm going to check our flight plan. Let's have a look. So here we go. So let's just see what what was imported when we did that. So the ILS runway is 25 right, which is correct. And the frequency, you remember, is 109.7. So I can zoom in and zoom out on the map with that smaller dial. If I push on that, You can scroll and get some different things. Okay, so um, let's just see if I click on that. I'm just trying to bring up uh, scroll inner right knob hold to lock. I'm just trying to see if I can get this to scroll down our flight plan. I don't think, yeah, okay, you can do it that way. Alright, so there is our waypoints into our runway. Alright, so you see Microsoft has created a lot of little waypoints here 
And that's probably because we had such a sharp, let me just bring up the, because it's such a sharp turn in here, I find Microsoft tends to build in uh, an approach for you, sort of like a uh, star approach, where you'll circle around and line up with the runway rather than fly up and have to make this incredibly sharp turn. So that's what this is all about. So that all looks fine. All right, so the other thing we wanted to do is uh, go back to flight plan here and go to NAV1 and put in 10970 and make that the active frequency. See, this is 11050. That's not going to work. So now you can see that's the active frequency. So I hit transfer, not enter. And let's just go back two procedures once again okay so that looks good and we'll go back to map and there we go so we're going to take off here you can see our plane here we're going to go over to the runway so everything looks good uh, we've got our barometric pressure we've got this change to gps we've got uh, flight plan looking good and our frequency enters so here's our autopilot flight director this is a vertical speed button here and then you scroll with your mouse up or down to go up or down that's your heading bug knob and there's your heading select so if you want to take it off nav and just uh, use heading there's your nav button and autopilot flight director there's your approach so altitude hold so that's the other thing we want to do is select an altitude of 3,000 feet. There we go. So when I scrolled on that. So now we are ready to take off. So I am going to finish taxiing. And we'll, uh, we'll just downsize that window a little bit for now. What I'm going to do as well, I'm going to bring a little nav map up here for you. Okay, I don't want to break too uh, aggressively with this plane. Okay, so I'm going to close this now and I'm going to zoom in and uh, just going to ask little nav map to keep our plane centered so that's this button right here so it'll always center it for us so I'm going to downsize that and now you can see us on on the runway right there so I'm just going to zoom in so I believe they told us we could take off on 27 right but we'll see whatever um, I'm not going to bother bringing up uh, ATC right now just let you see where we're going there So we're using uh, real time or real weather for this flight. And it's kind of nice how uh, you're able to use something like Little NavMap, which has so much information in it, to create a flight plan. 
So it makes the whole experience a little more realistic and really nice that you can actually export that file and save it as a Microsoft Flight file. There's the sock blowing across. Uh, more or less no, more or less down. Uh, let's just see where we're headed here. Okay, as soon as we stop here, we should get uh, should get our clearance from ATC to take off. Tower XCUB six one six ready for IFR departure runway two seven right. XCUB six one six altimeter two niner decimal niner five wind two eight seven at one zero. Cleared for takeoff runway two seven right. So. Cleared for takeoff runway 27 right XCUB 616. According to little nav map, we should be taking off into the wind, so I'm going to go with that because that's supposed to be accurate information. And I'm not sure what Microsoft, what they direction they've got that sock blowing there. It looks like, uh, yeah, I think we're okay. All right, so. Um, and we're going to stop here for a second and uh, I'm just going to downsize that window and we'll just do our checklist here and before takeoff these are the things that you would normally do so you could walk through those if you want to but I'm just going to auto complete just to, for the sake of time to speed things up so there's a little checks being done with your flight controls throttle revving it up The parking brake uh, is, is turned on, so that's why we're not going anywhere in order to do this test. So I don't want to rush this just in case it causes some uh, conflicts with uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. I'll just let it go through every day. Okay, so now we're just going to take off. I'm going to release the parking brake by pressing Control Delete on my keyboard. And whatever uh, program buttons you have, you can put those to release your parking brake. I'm just going to put the flaps down a little bit. There we go. So those flaps have to come up at uh, 300 feet. So I'm just going to bring them up uh, anytime before 300. I don't think we want, want them uh, on much higher. But normally this white zone is when you can have your landing gear down and your, your flaps. So what I'm going to do is go inside the plane and uh, I'm going to hit control 1 on my keyboard. So I'm going to hit autopilot. I'm going to hit nav. I'm hit vertical speed. And I'm going to hit up. So you don't want to climb too aggressively because this isn't a real powerful motor. Orlando departure XCUB 616 is at 800 feet climbing 3,000 feet. So right now I'm on GPS autopilot vertical speed. 700 feet per minute. There's our waypoint we're headed for. Uh, that should be coming up shortly. So let's just take a look uh, out the window here. Beautiful Florida. And I'm going to check out a little nav map and see how we're doing. So this is a pretty aggressive turn, so it's probably going to have to go rather gradual if it works at all.
Now I like to have this compass up because I just like it for setting uh, a heading in case uh, we get off track and I want to get uh, back. I know what, what to set the heading at quite easily. So you can see the planes turning right now. So that's first of all a good sign. And you can see we're climbing, so it gives you the information here, which is kind of cool. And there's our top of climb right here. So I'm just going to go outside for a second and show you that I have the heads up display on for exterior view. You can do that in your settings. So there's the airport we just took off from. And we're heading now to Daytona Beach. There's Orlando Sanford. For those of you that fly to Florida and go to Daytona Beach, this is a popular airport because uh, it's a little closer than uh, Orlando International. So we're turning, but we're following this GPS. But I'm going to get the map map up here and see how it's working. Okay. Now, when we get here, we got to turn again. If everything's running okay. Yeah. So, try not to get your uh, RPMs up too high. Let me just go inside the aircraft here. Have a look. Yeah, so I'm just going to cut back a bit on the throttle there. lights uh, I'm just going to click those on now so they're ready because type of thing you kind of forget okay so let's just look at this uh, screen here so we've got our primary screen here so there's our waypoint right there that we're headed towards and there's our bearing our distance estimated time to get there and our ground speed and we're tracking that's our tracking uh, magnetic north heading so barometric pressure I'm just going to check that again just press B on your keyboard to make sure it's set okay so there's not there's not a lot of stuff to do and this Garmin G1000 sure makes life a lot easier I'm just going to cut back my, uh, and our, my throttle a bit. So, Control 1 will give us this keyboard. Uh, I mean, this view. Control 2 will give us uh, our lights. Control 3 will bring us back to this pilot's view and these switches. And for you get up a little higher and you have to lean your fuel you can just pull on that to lean it a bit we're only at 3,000 so I don't think it's going to be much of an issue Orlando departure JetBlue 2052 is at so control feet, 4 this is your um, flaps now I'm controlling my flaps using my joystick but you can control your flaps by clicking hold click hold with your mouse your left mouse button and pull, 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 and you'll set your flaps. So this is um, propeller RPMs. I'm just going to cut that back a bit. That might be why we're getting into uh, high R RPMs. There's our throttle, and I'm just controlling that with my joystick. But this I prefer to do, and it's kind of nice when you drag it. It gives you your percentage. So let's, um, I'm just going to hit control uh, 8, control 9, control 10. So let's go through those quickly again. Control 1, give you this view. Control 2, control 3, control 4 on my keyboard, control 5, control 6, control 7, that's the brakes. Control 8 back here to the pilot's view. 
and center up control 9. So we seem to be on track, doing okay. I'm just going to bring up a little nav map and see what we got here. Okay, so now you can scroll on the little nav map, and when you do with your mouse wheel, you'll go in or out. So what I want to do is drag it up to here and take a look. Okay, so right here on the little nav map, it hasn't changed. But if we look at, uh, I'm just going to go back inside the aircraft and press control one and I'm going to back off here and you can see all these little waypoints here Microsoft Flight Sim added those you know, like I didn't put them in and nor did little nav map but Microsoft Flight Sim just modified what we had a bit so that we have a, a nice uh, star standard arrival procedures so they've entered these waypoints for us so it's going to be a curve smooth curve and turn towards the airport so the rest of it's pretty much the same except this little bit but that's not showing up on the little bad map as you can see but the whole idea is are we actually going to fly that is the plane going to do an ILS landing and approach now it should because we entered the proper frequency for that runway and we made sure it was an ILS runway and we should be flying into the wind when we land so it should be uh, not too difficult this plane isn't really hard to land you just have to remember not to slam the brakes on once you get down just kind of let it uh, gently coast to a stop and just brake gently So, it's a really nice plane. I'm sure anyone that has these in the real world and flies them enjoy. It just lacks some power. Like, it's not like the King Air that has two twin turbos. This is a little piston engine here. But it's FAA certified and approved. So, um, pretty nice little plane. Let's just take a look at the outside of the aircraft. If you can see yourself inside there flying. So I'm just going to go back inside. So we can take one passenger. No, it looks like it's a single seat. No, there's a seat back here. Okay. okay, so you can take one passenger and a little bit of luggage back there. So great little plane. Oscar Mike oh, some controls here for the person in the back as well I see they've got uh, yeah, they've got a propeller uh, to set the uh, RPMs and uh, also a throttle back there but you notice they're not lighting up so I can't really uh, use them so Beautifully uh, done, all the little details. Fire extinguisher on the front of the pilot's seat base. And of course some information here. That's the fuel selector that we looked at earlier. Emergency exit. So really a nice little plane so we're still flying right on course and let's just take a look outside here okay so uh, there's Florida down below and the thing I like about little nap map is uh, it gives you the streets and everything so Let's take a look and let it center things up. So a lot of times when you're flying in Microsoft Flight Sim, you really don't know what the lakes are down below, the little towns, and, and the roads that you're flying over. 
but uh, here's State Road 44, Florida 415. So that's great to know, and, and it's fun to be able to pick up this data. There's a new Samarina Beach water treatment facility that we're coming up to, and I'll be over here. Now, because I have it on center, this thing is uh, centering my aircraft, but if I click, turn it off, now I can drag it and it's not going to continually descend to the aircraft in the center of the window. I would have to do that myself. So, this allows us to take a look. So there's New Samarina Beach Municipal Airport. Anyone that's familiar with New Samarina Beach. And uh, there's the Dixie Freeway. Now the other thing too um, that's nice is you can see your, your heading. Okay, we should be turning shortly okay. here. Okay, now this is where uh, we might be picking up some of those waypoints that uh, Microsoft put in. We gotta make sure we don't get too far off course here. Now remember we saw those waypoints coming around like that. Now because this is still showing the magenta line. It means we're actually still flying our flight time that Microsoft Flight Sim for them. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to go inside the aircraft and we'll take a look and see right here. So the course that a uh, little nav map had took us right right up to here. But Microsoft uh, Flight Sim is going to allow us to do a nice smooth turn towards the runway. Don't forget we picked an approach, so that's the proper approach there. Let's just um, go outside the aircraft again for a second. And bring up a little nav map. Once again, you can see it's down below. There is Samarina Dunes Park. I don't know if you've ever been to New Smyrna Beach, but that's a great park to go and you, you'll get dolphins in here that you can see. Uh, it's a nice little spot we'd like to go to get some fish. There's the Lighthouse Point Park, famous Lighthouse Point Park. A little tourist destination. Okay, so you can see uh, we're not going to have to start descending for a bit. But this is likely where we're going to pick up uh, right around here. Is where we're going to pick up the glide slope and the localizer for this uh, runway. Okay, we're just going to follow our route here. See how we're doing. Flying out over the mighty Atlantic. Let's just take a look inside. Yeah, everything's looking good. So we'll go outside the aircraft and have a look back and see what we're looking at here. So this is uh, New Samarina Beach here. And uh, Daytona Beach up in this area. It's about 20 minute drive north of New Samaritan Beach. So look how nicely Microsoft did these little condos back there. I mean, they're not bang on accurate, but at least that's where those buildings are. That's pretty good. Like all this stuff is very nicely rendered. I'm just going to use my mouse, so if I hold down my right button on my mouse, I can drag and take a look at things. Ok, 
that right behind the plane is a good view for lining up with the runway. Yeah, everything's going according to oil. We're just going to check the barometric pressure again. Just press B on your keyboard. There. Now remember, if you have little nav map up and you're pressing B on your keyboard, nothing's going to happen as long as that nav, because it's uh, sort of connected to the keyboard, connected to little nav map. So I'll bring the little nav map up again, and I'm going to zoom out. So you can see uh, these uh, sort of headed out towards these waypoints here. So I'm not sure if you selected those yourself, uh, if they would actually fly that route, or if Microsoft would still just do this instead. I find sometimes if you add, a, like if I was to go into the uh, flight plan on the plane right now and start adding these in, I'm not sure I would actually fly to them, but I don't want to try that right now because it could actually corrupt the file and we could be getting some inaccuracy. So everything seems to be going fine right now. I have no problem with this happening, actually. Uh, it's, you know, ju basically just making it a smoother turn for us. And it looks like it's headed for this uh, waypoint right here because that's the. Uh, the waypoint for for the approach to the runway. So I'm going to um, hit this to center the aircraft now because we're getting close. And you notice that um, this compass that I have up stays centered on the aircraft as well. Like I said, you can turn that on and off, but we can always see what our heading is. So with the wind blowing, um, so it's blowing that way. Blowing towards that dot. So we're, we've got a wind blowing this way. So in order to stay on course, we, you can see the plane is actually flying. Uh, it's tracking there, but it's actually flying that way. So it's starting to turn now. I'm going to go back inside the plane. Yeah, there we go. It's looking good. Okay. So I like that you have your headings right on these lines so you know there's nautical miles and uh, you also have your heading 38 magnetic north there and here it's 252, the glide slope is 3 degrees, and the frequency is 1097. So a lot of really good information there. The more information you have, the better for planning these flights. So Now if this wasn't an ILS runway, you wouldn't be able to do an ILS landing. That's why I say it's nice to have this identified, because these other, this, 16 and 34 aren't ILS runways. They're not going to have a ILS frequency that you can lock on to. Okay, I'm going to downsize uh, the window, turn off the weather bar. Yeah, South Daytona, Port Orange, Daytona Beach. 
So let's downsize that and see how we're doing here because we are going to have to turn on uh, our approach. So just going to click here and show you what I mean. Right here we're going to have to hit the approach button. Now we should pick up the localizer once we get close enough and turn towards the runway if everything goes well. Just going to adjust my view a bit here. So we should be turning shortly to the left, flying west in the westerly direction. So our speed is looking okay. Just going to increase it a little bit. So you can see they really don't want you going much more than 115 knots with this uh, plane airspeed. Okay, let's bring up the map map. Alright, so very shortly we should be turning that. And if we don't, then I will have to turn on the heading button. And the heading, set it, and uh, take off nav. So I'm just going to go inside for a second and take a look at things. Okay. We're still on GPS, so the nav is still on. Autopilot's still on. So everything's fine. It's just going to that final waypoint there, I believe. So, Microsoft put this in, probably this waypoint right here to go to. It'll give you lots of time to turn and line up with the runway. So that's what's happening right now. As we can see, and very shortly we have to descend. You see, top of the descent here. We are at 3,000 feet. And uh, for this waypoint here, if you see this window pops up here on either side, it depends on where you're at. But uh, if you look, you can see over there that window. Uh, it tells you you want to be at uh, 1,789 feet. But uh, if we pick up the glide slope, that's going to take care of that. I haven't heard from ATC. Um, Let's just bring them up. You can do it this way or with your mouse uh, or keyboard or your joystick. But anyway, um, the altimeter is 29 or 9 or 3, which is correct. Okay, so, yeah. They're not telling us to descend at all right now. So we're just going to leave it like that for now. So we are now heading towards the runway. All right, I'm just going to bring up the nav map again. So we're going to have to start descending soon. So we're just going to wait and see how close we get to this um, ILS uh, feather here for the runway and see when it picks up the... oh, it just did. Alright, so that's how far up. Just picked up the localizer right there. You can see LOC. It's in green, which means it's locked on to it. Now, I am going to hit approach and put on some flaps. Put down some flaps and slow down. I'm going to have to slow down because uh, we're, dis we're going to be descending, so just going to hit approach 
and you see it's in white right now GS that's got to turn green if, in order to pick it up this little diamond here green diamond that starts to drop the closer you get to intercepting the glide slope so you see it going down there so let's just get outside here and take a look at things for a second okay so I'm going to put some flaps down when we get closer. I don't want to slow down too much. Now, when you, if you're outside, uh, at, you know, and you have this heads up turned on, heads up display, and you start seeing that this go down, the vertical speed down, and this dropping, then you'll know you picked up the glide slope. I'll just turn a little nav map on for a second so you can see where we are there. Okay, so coming up to descent here. And I believe that's the runway right there. So let's see exactly where this turns green at what point, what, what spot we are on this um, plan, flight plan elevation profile. The good news is it's staying uh, centered on this needle here for the localizer. Alright, so we're getting into that feather now. And I do have approach turned on. If you don't have approach turned on, it's, it's not going to pick up that glide slope. There, it just turned green, and it was right when we got to the, the green feather for the runway. So we are descending now, you can see. And that little green uh, diamond just sort of came right to that spot there, and that's when we picked it up. So now i got to watch my speed. I'm just going to take this off for now. And uh, just going to go outside for a second. Okay. When I get a little closer, I'm going to put the flaps down. We're still a ways out there. But we are descending. At 3 degrees. So I'm just going to have a look at the side here. Um, this looks like we're flying level, but you can see we're going down slightly. And I don't want to put the flaps on just now. Uh, when we're still this far out. Go back inside. Lined right up at the runway. Our next waypoint is uh, a minute 32 seconds away. And that's that waypoint right there. Climb and maintain 3,000 feet altimeter to 9 decimal 9 tree. Climb and maintain 3,000 feet XCUB 616. Now, uh, for some reason they're telling us to climb, which so I, I think you get little glitches with ATC, uh, little bugs. Obviously, we're on our approach for the runway, so you know we're not going to stay up at 3,000 feet. Uh, until we get to the runway, we'll end up having to descend too quickly and picking up too much airspeed. So I don't know why they'd be saying that, but we're on a nice approach and descent to the runway. Well, your best just to leave it at that and just ignore. So coming in to Daytona Beach, where the Daytona 500 is run, and uh, 
that uh, racetrack is very close to this runway, to this airport. So we're going to probably see it on uh, right or left. I'm not sure which side it's on. Um, close to I-95. Let's uh, bring up the map here. See if I can find that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're getting really close now. So there, there's a Daytona International Speedway. So that's on the right, up ahead. And this is I-95, I believe, right here. Alrighty, let's uh, get ready to land this thing. Put the flaps down. Make sure I keep my speed up. Yeah, you would want to land it around 55 knots, I think, is a pretty good speed. So I'm going to slow down a bit. XCUB 616, please expedite your climb 3,000 feet. Uh, I don't think so. We're coming into land, if you don't mind. They already told us we were clear to come to this runway. Looking good. Good for you, Glide Slope and Garmin G1000. Avionics working beautifully. Okay. Let's have a look outside. I'm just lining this thing up a little bit for you. Ah, looking good. Well, I'm just going to cut my speed back. Got it back to idle right XCUB now. I'm going to take the autopilot off because it's a li little bit offline. So I'm just going to see if I can put this down gently, gently as I can. See what we got here. Ooh, she like likes to go a little crazy. Bring those flaps up a little bit. So I'm just gently gonna break. See? See what see what I'm talking about? That tail dragger thing. You don't want it to Okay. You can put the flaps down a little bit more. Try and slow her down. It is a little tricky to land uh, this plane without it bouncing a little bit, but anyway, I'm gently going to put the brakes on now, bring her to a stop. Okay, let's uh, take a look at things here. Okay, so I'll bring up a little nav map and see where we're at here. So the airport is, well, that's the thing I like, uh, the airport is to our right. And so are all the uh, parking spots. So I'm just going to pull off to the right here. And I'm going to uh, request a taxi to a gate, if we can get it. So I have to take that off in order to get the flaps to come up. Well, actually, no, I didn't have to because of my joystick. I, I decided to use my joystick for that command. So let's just... Uh, a little bit further here, just past this um, stopping point here, right here. I'm just going to stop here. Okay, now uh, I'm just going to request ATC for parking, uh, so I can use my joystick for that. And uh, tune Daytona ground. 
Request taxi to the gate. Daytona ground XCUB 616, request taxi to the gate. XCUB 616, taxi to gate for using taxiway Juliet. Gate taxi four. to gate for using taxiway Juliet XCUB 616. So, there's uh, gate four right there. So I see we can just go up here. And so if you didn't have these blue chevrons on, you could still find your way around the airport. Uh, I have them on in the settings to help. So I'm just going to bring up little nav map so you can see where we're going. And I'm just going to give you a slightly better view here. I can turn this off now. Profile. Just going to bring it around here and into that parking spot. Now this would probably be, be sent to general parking or aviation parking, but I asked for a gate. Small plane like this probably might not get a gate, but. This will allow our one passenger to get out of the plane and go into the airport. Instead of having to walk across the tarmac. Here we're coming around. There might be somebody there to direct us right into our parking gate. So I'm not really sure why they have it going that way. I'm just going to go directly in this way. We've got a big loop for us to do. Okay, this is looking good. You can see on little nav map we're going into gate 4. And nobody here directing us, but that's okay. We know where we're going. So the box turned green, which, which is uh, what it's supposed to do, if you have that turned on in your settings. And then when you actually get to the exact spot, it will disappear entirely. It's just sort of a guide for you. So, uh, because uh, we have a small aircraft here, it's, it's maybe not going to work. But that's normally what would happen. So, that ends our flight. Thank you very much for joining me. We can shut this down now and we are actually in our proper parking spot. So really, we pulled in right there. The, the, this box normally would just disappear. Uh, let's um, shut the aircraft off. And go inside of it. And uh, where's that checklist uh, for shutdown? Shut down here. We did our normal landing, so we don't need to go through that. So let's uh flaps zero throttle idle parking brake. Okay, turn it on. Set mixture. We want that to be lean. Lean. Ignition. We want to shut them off. Off. Master switch. Alt and bat. Okay. There we go. Thank you very much for joining me on this flight. I hope you learned something about how to make a flight plan in little nav map and how useful it can be and fun to work with. And also, this is a great little plane, the X-Cub, to fly, uh, especially doing little bush trips or short trips. You're not going to want to go too far, but if you do uh, want to make a longer flight, you can just hit this Go To button, and it will allow you to travel forward in time to your descent or uh, your final. So you actually could do a rather lengthy flight and just do the takeoff, and landing portion of the flight and not have all that in between time used up. So thank you very much. Uh, if you liked it, give me a like and otherwise I uh, will catch you next time. 